Hello and welcome to another Daily Muppet. In today's video, we're going to talk about the David De Gea contract and the goalkeeper situation, some of the targets United look to be missing out on in the midfield, as well as where is the takeover news following the video I put out on Monday, and then finally top four and uh, some changes to this Champions League structure and money that actually make it an even bigger deal moving forward. So let's get right to it. Um, starting, obviously, there was the news that came out on Tuesday that uh, the the contract of David De Gea, the new contract of David De Gea, had essentially been agreed pending a final sign-off and announcement, and um, that it was looking to come out soon. Um, and that would be on a lower wage with more incentive based on play and things like that. Now, people are saying, well, if he's on 200000 a year, a month, a week rather, uh, he can't be a number two, all of that. There is one thing I want to clear up on Manchester United contracts in terms of how they tend to get reported and what the reality of them is. We don't have all the details on this. Nobody really does, but it's important to look at it. Um, for one of the contracts that did get all the details on a long time back was Cavani's. And the way that that one was structured is he had a base wage and then it was heavily incentivized, 50,000 for an appearance, 50,000 for a starting appearance, 50,000 for a goal. And so his total wages could reach something like 15 million a year, 300K a week. His base was 180 or 175. It's been reported that David De Gea's wage is 350, 375,000 a week currently. However, what we do not know is how much of that is based and how much of it is incentivized. Uh, for example, is it 300,000 base with incentives that could bring it up to 375? It's almost always reported as the full wage with incentives, um, which is not necessarily the wage that is reached. Jaden Sancho is another example. It's been reported to something like 350,000. It is a heavily structured and incentivized contract. Um, so when we talk about David De Gea taking a wage cut, 200,000 a week could be the maximum. If you understand what I mean, we don't know this. If the details come out, we'll know better. But just one thing to think with, we don't know that it's 200,000 a week base. It's unlikely that the, the number being mentioned is the base number. It rarely is. It could very well be 200,000 a week maximum with a 120,000 base with incentives per game started, per clean sheet, per things like that. You understand where the top of it could reach 200,000 a week or a little bit more. And so that's one way to think about it, that if he wasn't playing, it's not necessarily 200,000 a week. It may be 120 a week for, you know, which some would argue is still too much, but for a backup keeper at Manchester United, I think is pretty on par with what someone like Sergio Romero was making back then. So that's just one thing to think with and why it may not necessarily inhibit <clears throat> um, United from signing a keeper or using Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson is on about 125k a week. So it tends to be fair wages for, you know, backups and, and things like that. So just something to think with. In the Times article from Charlotte Dunker and Paul Hurst, it was stated that they may still sign a goalkeeper and may still test out Dean Henderson. I have been saying now since I think September, and not it's what, eight months now, that David De Gea would get a new contract on lower wages, but United would still look to bring in a keeper, and I'm still hearing the same thing. It's all about if the money stretches, and we'll get to some of the, the implications of that as there's been some changes to the way that top four is paid out, or rather Champions League is paid out. Um, so... That's one thing. They're still looking at keepers. They're still considering Dean Henderson. They wanted him to have his operation so that he would be ready in time. A lot of stuff's been reported. They want to get a look at Dean Henderson. And uh, it's funny because when Ten Hag was coming in, a lot of people said he's going to bend De Gea. He's going to start Dean Henderson. And I had heard even before he was like on the job, I think you can find tweets from back and videos from April last year, after he'd gotten, maybe it was May, after he'd been selected, that David De Gea was on his keep list and Dean Henderson was on the out list. And people didn't believe that then, <laughs> and then it's what happened, and then they didn't believe he would sign him under a new contract. I understand why people are upset about it. I 
don't think it makes any sense to me. I don't think, I think David De Gea, I think the goalkeeper's a huge issue, as I mentioned in the last video. I think it's a huge issue. But if it's on a decently structured contract, it's worth having a backup in his mind, someone that he's familiar with that's in, according to a lot of people, a good locker room presence and all of that. If we do not sign a, a goalkeeper or Dean Henderson doesn't get a shot this summer, then I think it would be fair to get very agitated and very upset. And I understand that a lot of the reports are not talking about a goalkeeper, and so it makes it seem like it's not going to happen. If they don't sign a goalkeeper this summer, or Dean Henderson doesn't get a look in, then the outrage would be a bit more justified. But until then, let's wait and see, okay? They know they're still looking at it. As accurate as the report was that they were going to have taken him on a lower contract, I know they've been looking at keepers, okay? So let's see what happens. Um, in terms of the midfield targets, uh, I talked about Amrabat and looking at him first and things like that. And I heard pretty quickly that some things had already changed, um, that uh, Amrabat has an offer from elsewhere. I tweeted that out already. And <clears throat> it's, it's just continuing to be difficult getting anybody in. Um, not getting anybody in because obviously we can't make moves, but with the slowness missing out on targets. I, I went down the list here and, you know, there was for the two different positions, there's McAllister, who's likely going to Liverpool, and Mount, who was likely going to Liverpool or to stay at Chelsea. There's still Kudus, who might be very expensive from Ajax. There's Vega, who may be available, but City perhaps could look at, I don't know. Uh, Gravenberch, United are still interested in Sabitzer for the 8-10 positions. Now, I think some of those are good targets and some of them aren't. And I'm concerned that it's starting to look like we fall all the way down the list to signing Sabitzer because it's the easy deal to replace Donny van de Beek. I don't think that makes sense. I don't think that upgrades our starting 11. And our strategy should be to sign players who improve our starting 11 and push players like Ericsson, Fred, etc., into permanent depth positions rather than starters. Right? Makes sense to me. Sabitzer's not that guy. Um, there are people who are. I don't know. Maybe Gabri Vega of that list would be on there. But then for the other side of it, depending on how we want to play, for that more deeper position, you have Amrabat, who looks like he's going to somewhere in Spain, and that would be his preference. Rice, who obviously Arsenal are looking at and leading the race. Frankie de Jong, who United still want. Eric Ten Hag still wants, but we... There's, I'm not even going to talk about it because we know how that went. Um, Caicedo is obviously a target. United are very interested in, but it's going to be really difficult. Um, Arsenal are still hanging around there, I think. I don't know exactly, but it's going to be really difficult. Then there's Lavia, who uh, United have had discussions with his family at one point, but there's a lot more reports again around Chelsea looking at him. And then there's players like Nunes and Zubamendi that I mentioned a long time ago, United are scouting. I don't know who they get at this point in time. I'm, I'm concerned about that. And I, and, I, and I know that a midfielder is wanted at least one, you know, likely two, but I don't know exactly what's going to happen at this point in time. And, um, you know, so it, it's, it's, you know, it's a little bit concerning. Give me one second here. Let me just mute this real quick. And um, anyway, so, you know, we'll see what happens on the midfield targets. Now, moving to the takeover real quickly, and I won't drag this out. The takeover situation, uh, I what I mentioned on Monday is that I would likely hear that there would be, I would likely hear, um, or the parties... Parties, a party at least, was expecting to hear back by end of the day Tuesday. As far as I know, they have, and that discussions have occurred. I don't know exactly what the feedback was. I don't know exactly what was said. I don't know exactly what happened. Um, but that, as far as I understand, has happened, and we will find out soon. That's all I can really say about it at the moment. There's other things that I've heard specifically on this, but I just can't talk about it. That's not to say I've heard, oh, this person's the exclusive bidder, and I'm not going to tell you or something like that. There's just, there's details that I've heard, but not those kind of details. And I do know for sure that they've talked. That's what I can say uh, at this point in time. 
And so hopefully we will find out soon. Hopefully it comes out in the media. Hopefully it gets briefed to the media when it's ready. I don't know what the process would be at this point in time. If they're moving into exclusive talks or moving into the final round of things with, with one party, it may be rather quiet until it's totally resolved and ready to move forward. Because you, at that point, you're kind of done with all the jockeying for position and PR and briefs and all of that. So the purpose of leaking things out to the media is likely gone until they decide to. Um, so I hope it does come out soon. And then on top four, uh, there was an article from Martin Ziegler uh, at the Times that the restructured Champions League TV money results in about a 30 million pound increase for clubs in Champions League starting next year. And that is a huge, huge thing. If you think about the way that FFP works, you can spend next season about 90% of your revenue. Um, that extra 30 million boost from the Champions League revenue if you think about it from a transfer standpoint, you can make a hundred million a pound player purchase and pay their 10 million a year wages with that. You understand? That's how much that matters. So that extra revenue boost is huge for increasing the ability to spend with FFP. And so it is extremely vital that United get that because that is going to increase what we can buy this summer and stretch the budget a little bit further beyond you know, obviously spending big on a striker and potentially then moving all the way to a, uh, you know, a goalkeeper or a midfielder. Not all the way, because I think they're going to get a midfielder, but being able to get the goalkeeper we want, spend the money that we need, even if spending big on a striker. So uh, that's just something to bear in mind. There's more legitimate, real revenue that can be counted for FFP um, coming for Champions League next year. And so it is extremely vital if it's going to stretch to getting that goalkeeper, getting in a ex potentially very expensive midfielder on top of the striker situation, even with a takeover, that is going to be vital to make that happen. Okay? So anyway, I hope this uh, information was interesting. I hope the news does come out. I know communication has occurred. Um, I just can't. There's, there's details, things I can't say on here, but I do know communication has occurred. I don't know, oh, XYZ has been given the exclusives or anything like that. But communication has absolutely occurred between Ray and Group and at least, you know, Ineos in this case as the one that I've heard from. Okay, so thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, turn notifications on, and I will see you in the next video.